All right, hey guys, so this is the second video in the series. This is going to be how to set up a network share and how to connect to it, but you don't need to connect to it from another computer for Kodi. You actually just need to share the uh, drive where your videos are located, your music, your movies, your TV shows, stuff that you want to scan into Kodi. Um, so I'm going to unshare this just so, just so it'll be, uh, like when you first set it up, right? So let's do that. And then, <clears throat> so, and also how to name your file. So let's do that first. So you have a hard drive on a computer and you need one computer to set up Kodi the way I do, because everything's going to be locally stored, meaning on a computer drive somewhere or on a NAS, which is a network attached storage that you can access over your network at home. Um, but if you're just starting out, you need one decent computer and then the rest can be Raspberry Pis or, uh, you know, old computers or whatever. It doesn't matter because that one decent computer is going to be doing all the work with the MySQL. Um, so how you name your files here. So uh, let's say you have a computer and you buy a uh, four or an eight terabyte drive or 10 terabyte drive, right? You need some type of hard drive to store your media on. So you are going to have a hard drive here on this computer. I have my files in a folder called my videos. And then I have one for movies and one for TV shows. Uh, I recommend doing this because then you can just share this whole drive or this folder. Um, and then all your videos are in here, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we set up Cody. But as far as how to name them, so I have a folder for movies. And then in that folder, I have each movie in its own folder. I recommend doing it this way. Uh just it, it works better like this and then in each folder I have the file name and it's the exact same as the folder so the name of the file matches the name of the folder identic the the exact same uh, and you need to just put the name of the movie and then a space and then the year and you can either do parentheses or not doesn't doesn't really matter and do the same thing inside on the folder um, you don't want anything else in here, no other files, no anything, just the, just the movie file, no NFOs or text or uh, movie posters or anything, because Cody could scan those in instead of going out to scrape for them on the internet. The year is very important too, so you need the correct year. Uh, if the year is off, Cody won't scan it in correctly, you could have issues, it'll think it's a different movie. Uh, so on and so on. Sometimes Cody is one year off. So if you look on IMDB, uh, it says a certain year and you put it to that and Cody won't scan it in right. That's usually because Cody is using the movie database, not IMDB. It's called the movie DB. So if you go here and look for a movie, um, let's see, do brain dead because this is a good example of something you know you need this is how you can check what year and the actual name Cody is going to be looking for sometimes a movie is named differently too so that's why I pulled up this one for instance this is called brain dead except in the United States in the United States it was released as dead alive um, in 1992 so you, sometimes you'll get movies where they have a different name and they won't scan in correctly and you have to manually go in rename the file and try different things until Cody scans it in but that movie database website is a good way to do that <clears throat> so that's how you name your movies so in a folder called movies on your drive wherever and then one folder with the correct name and year and then the file name the exact same and if you guys, you know, if you have a lot of DVDs, Blu-rays, you're going to burn whatever, uh, you need to name correctly. And it's, if you already have a lot of stuff and it's named wrong, it's going to be a pain for you. Um, just go through and do it manually. You only have to do it once, and then I recommend backing up your stuff somehow. For instance, I have two uh, RAID 5s. So I have my movies here mirrored onto this 
RAID 5 also. So these are both 20 terabyte RAID 5 arrays. So basically one 20 terabyte hard drive is logically how it shows up. You can see here. And then I have another one over here. Um, so I have my stuff backed up and mirrored in two places. You, you know, and I have it backed up online. You don't have to do that. But as you get into this, if you get into Cody to the point where you're having everything local, which is which is nice, I think it's the best way to do it, then you're going to want to make sure it's named correctly and you're going to want to have your stuff backed up because it takes a long time to uh, collect stuff, to burn stuff, to organize stuff. Um, just like if you were collecting, you know, physical movies and trying to display those, it, that takes a lot of work, right? And some people who do that, like I have a ton of DVDs and Blu-rays, movies I've been collecting since 94, but after burning them and scanning them and ripping them all into digital, they sit in a bin in my closet. Like I don't use them because this is so much better in my opinion. And now for TV show naming convention, we have a folder called TV show up here. Um, I have an E drive because this is on my computer. This isn't the drive Cody reads from, but it, it doesn't really matter. But you can just name it TV shows. And then inside here, you have each TV show. And I don't put a year usually unless it's a show that has multiple instances. Like there's different versions of Twilight Zone. So I put a year so we know which one this is. It's the 1959 version. And you put the year for the first episode that came out. Um, so the year that the TV show was released. And then inside of this, you don't put the TV shows in their own folder. You just name them the name of the TV show, space dash space, and then S01, E01, and so on accordingly. You want two digits after S and two digits after E. Don't do S1, E1. Um, so this is how Cody will scrape them in the best. Or you can do the name of the show, and then uh, just a space like this. And you don't need to put the name of the episode, but you can too. But the important part is the name of the show and then space and then um, the episode number. So that's, that's it for how you name them. Now you need to share <clears throat> the drive or the folder that um, your videos are in so that Cody can access those so you need and access them across the network if you're going to run multiple Cody instances because all those Cody machines need to eventually be pointed at the MySQL server that I'm going to show you how to set up so this is how you do this if you go to this computer we'll just do it from this window it's easier to see you go to the drive that your media is on on whatever computer that is in your house and you right click on it and you go to properties and then these are the two tabs you'll generally care about but sharing is how you do it this is the easiest way to do it this is a little more advanced um, but we'll do this first so you click advanced sharing you click the box share this folder and then It'll default with everyone to read status. You can just do full control, meaning people can read and write and delete stuff off of it. You can also add a user if you want. So I'm going to add my login name that I use on all my computers. It's the same, but if it's different, that's okay too. Um, but you'll want the name that you log into the computer with where the drive is located. So then check names like this, hit OK. And then now these two people have access, but I only have read access and I want full control. So I'm going to click that so I can do everything across a network. And I'm going to hit apply and OK and close. We've just shared this drive. Now this drive and everything on it is accessible across a network. Um, and then that's it. That's how you share a drive and that's how you name your files. Once that's done, then Cody can connect to it over a network, which I will show you. So if you're not understanding exactly, just stick with it. And by the end of this, we'll, uh, we will get you 
set up and running a centralized Cody setup, which is awesome. Hey guys, this is a follow up uh, to how to share a network folder. I'm making this quick video. This is something you should also do. So when you're uh, accessing files across a share and trying to change stuff, so if I want to go, and this is on my server, I'm on my computer right now, so I'm connected to a different computer through my share here. If I want to edit something or delete a file or something in Windows, um, Windows caches thumbnails. So sometimes there will be thumbnails there, and then when you try to delete the folder, it won't let you. Um, so you want to shut off caching of thumbnails and how you do that is uh, and you should do this on every computer If you're doing stuff across a network, it just saves issues of um, It'll say the files open so you can't delete it or modify it Even though it's not open and this is why so if you type in gp edit dot msc this will open uh, local group policy editor and then go to administrative templates windows components file explorer and then in this right window here you will see uh, turn off the caching of thumbnails in hidden thumbs.db files you want to double click this and you actually want to enable this because enabling it will turn off the caching so don't disable it enable it and then hit apply and okay and you should be good then you shouldn't have any issues of uh, cached stuff not allowing you to delete stuff anyway I put this as a footnote uh, at the end of the last video for sharing so I'm just gonna add this into that thanks for watching in the next video we're gonna set up my sequel and get into the fun stuff um, so I hope you guys are following along, and I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or concerns, comments, leave them in the comment section under YouTube. Um, thank you.